You know, I'm going to jump over to Hector right now. How about and that? And actually, Hector uh, works well with our next question, which is any tips on storage? And somebody else said storage uh, there with Paul, who asked the first question, storage issues off and on the road, which is very similar to organizing. Yeah. I'll get to that one. I'm going to just address Hector first. What is your challenge, Hector? Maybe oh, that's, your... that's specifically, that's what he said um, in his, hello, uh, Mark and Jared, what is your perspective on organizing pics? This seems to be my struggle at the moment. Oh, organizing pictures. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, listen, I just use Lightroom. Um, <clears throat> it's one of its greatest features is the fact that it introduced an organization system back in the day when... Lightroom was first launched 2007, I believe. Before that, you know, you had Photoshop and there was no organization system with Photoshop. There really wasn't. You had to put it in your own folders. And so it was a pretty big breakthrough when Lightroom came around. Most, I think all editing software now has that organization system. Um, I just made a course about this. It's coming out, I don't know, hopefully soon. We're we're gearing up for it in the next month or so about using Lightroom, but you can apply the same principles that I go over to any of your editing software, but organize it according to a system where you can find it later. Now, I like to put the date and the subject. So, because date helps me identify, like for instance, I've, I've done an, a lot of shoots in Yosemite, okay? so. I want to be able to identify the one I did in 2013, October 2013, I might put in there. Yosemite, October 2013. You can either put the date at, at the front end, which I tend to do, and then the subject after it. it, it it's kind of a really simple way to organize. Um, from there, so it's, it's you just don't want a jumble of of stuff all over the place. You want to make sure you're putting things in folders neatly so you can find them again. One of our greatest frustrations, isn't it, is I know I've got that somewhere. Where is it? You know, and I still have that happen to me and it's annoying. Um, the new Lightroom doesn't use libraries. The, the cloud version doesn't actually have libraries, which I still like the library personally. But it does organize things according to date, and you can you can pull it up according to subject too. But um, I I prefer Lightroom Classic for a lot of reasons, and it, and one of them is I like the library a lot. But Hector and who was the other one that Mark asked this? So no, uh, it was it. Paul Paul and Highland Mary. Uh, they were also asking for tips on storage. Okay. Uh, specifically, Highland Mary wants to know for when they're off the grid and on the road, which you've done many. Yeah. I mean, I have trips. numerous drives. I was going to see if I could grab one here. Um, I like SanDisk. And so uh, you, you can get, um, you, you know, I have a huge 20, uh, 12 terabyte drive that I keep all my stuff on. It's a it's you're going to want an, an external hard drive for sure. And let me see if I can grab one of my little drives here without disrupting things. Jared, you can keep talking while I'm doing this. Yeah, um, kind of going along with that. Um, drives are really important. Have them labeled. Um, uh, you know, the drives that Mark has, uh, you know, there are all labeled. And that's where you know, we organize things. Uh, file structure is really important. Once again, putting things uh, in folders. I'm going to. That's how we get things. I'm not going to violate the the, yeah, most, the upload that we're doing. Well, that yeah, no, that's coming from a different drive. But uh, I don't want to just unplug this without. Um, let's see which one is right. This? Right. I was just telling them how it's also really important when you've got multiple drives to mark. The drives yes so that you know which drive is which because otherwise you can lose track real fast oh boy that's so good you know what i do i have a trick for that for a bigger drive but let me let me show you this first of all so this is a western digital which by the way owns sandisk 
this is a, I don't know, a four terabyte drive. So you can put a lot of stuff in here and travel around with it. This has got Bob Holmes complete classes in this drive. So get, get one of these to travel with. You wanna, you, you wanna have access to a drive if you're traveling. So also that allows you to back stuff up. You gotta have good backups, guys. Um, and then have an external drive for your bigger stuff. So one of the things I do, if I archive a drive, you know, it's like this, I will print um, from my finder what's in that drive and, and then tape it to the outside of the drive. So I don't have to open it to find out what's in it. And I can go, oh yeah, there's where my 2015 shoot to whatever is. Now I don't archive my photographs at all. I mean, I make backups of them, but they don't go in some hidden drive. Photographs don't take up, relatively speaking, don't take up that much room compared to videos. Videos I archive because if I've done a client production from 2012, I'm not going to look at it all the time, but I want, I don't want to get rid of it necessarily. So I put it in a, a drive and it's archived. And again, I print out um, what's in the finder. And that's really a handy way to do it. Just make a print of it. And you may not think right now that that's necessarily super useful. It's like, oh, there's not much, you know, and everything. But when you're looking back at drives from like 2009, that's very helpful. <laughs> really helpful. It's I'm going to show helpful. you what I mean. This is a living, breathing example here. Let me just get get this screen. And this this is this morning we're editing this thing, and I don't know my my uh, stream deck is frozen. You're just not allowing me to switch, which is really strange. Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll come. Well, I could do it this way. Here, we'll do it this way. So I'm going to, yeah, I don't want that. Get that out of there. Okay. Well, let's see. Yeah. The joys of just, live. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. So this is, um, we're editing this right now. You can just print this out. So we're print, we're, we're editing the Point Lobos photo walk. You just do a screen capture and then print this and then tape that to the side of the drive that you're archiving. That's what I'm talking about here. Okay, very helpful. The name of the game, you guys, is very simple. Label, constantly, when in doubt, get a better name for it because your naming convention needs to communicate to somebody else that doesn't know what you're talking about. And you know what? You're the somebody else. Because right now you're you're working on a project and you call it, um, I don't know, photo walk. Oh, I'll always remember which one that is. You know, it was in January 2021. No, you won't. <laughs> You'll go, which photo walk was that? So put the name of the photo walk, Point Lobos. Make it a descriptive name and a date. And that's how you stay organized. Okay. Not only oh. that, but you can search in a computer. So make it easily searchable terms. Good point. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.